it's a real privilege to be here today and to share with you our story. I've chatted with a number of you earlier, uh, and uh, it's good to, to see and to meet people of like mind, thinking about how we transform many of the services in the public sector to be better for our customers and for our citizens. Uh, it's something that we're really passionate about at Transport for London. Um, I'll get the hang of this clicker in a moment. So I just want to share with you today, just in, in a few minutes really, our story of what we've been able to achieve at Transport for London through the use of the cloud and why we chose the cloud, what was that all about, uh, how did we actually build the thing that we've created. I'm sure some of you have recognized the product when I show you a bit more about it. And what have been our outcomes? What, what have we learned uh, in the six months or so since we uh, deployed this product and created the thing that we've created? Let me just tell you a little bit about Transport for London, for those of you, maybe you're not all from around here, uh, you may not be that familiar with us, but we are London's Integrated Transport Authority. We're responsible for pretty much everything that, that rides on the surface of London, crawls under the surface, or, or travels under the surface. If you, can, if you can think of it, it's something that we're responsible for. In fact, uh, my guess is that many of you would have come here today on our services. Maybe, maybe a hands up if you, if you did come here on one of our, on one of our things. Okay. For those of you who haven't got your hand up, what did you come on? <laughs> just, just give me a... You were staying in the hotel. Okay. Yeah, we don't run the hotel. Anything else? You walked. Well, we run walking as well, of course. Yeah. We're not selling tickets for that yet, but you know, a, time, a, time, a time may come. Uh, but we're responsible for things such as dial-a-ride and for... Uh, trams and many things that you might not be familiar with that we look after, taxi and private hire. We run lots of cycling services, the roads themselves. We facilitate around 24 million journeys a day in London. That's a huge number. Uh, and many of those are on the roads, many of them obviously on the networks that you know more about, like the tube, and buses. And we're really planning and developing for the future. If you just look down the road at Bond Street, you'll see the crossrail. Uh, development is going in there and all over London. We're an organization that's on the move uh, and we're developing and improving things for London's future as London grows. Many more people coming to London over the next few years. We're an iconic brand. We're embedded into the very fabric of this city. If you think about London, you think about the tube, you think about the bus uh, and that's who we are. But we are more than that as well. You know, many people think of us as an operator but our mission is bigger than that. Uh, our mission is to keep London working and growing and to make life in London better. So it's not just about the trains, it's not just about the buses, it's genuinely about making things better for people in London. And the way that we seek to deliver that is by putting our customers at the center of everything we do. And really all the things that I'm gonna talk about, they're built on those principles about making London a better place and making it right for our customers. And I think in the public sector, sometimes we're, we're not always as uh, clear on who we're doing this stuff for. You know, we talk about infrastructure, we talk about the cloud, we talk about services. Really, the cloud and infrastructure is just a means to an end. It's a means to the end of creating a service, doing something that people are gonna love, doing something that people can engage with or live their daily life through. So that's what this is about, and that's what these services facilitate. Again, I will get the clicker to double click. And if we talk about, well, it's all about customers, well, what do our customers really want? And we've, we've spent some time looking at this as Transport for London and really brought this down to four clear areas that customers want from us. I know there's five things there, but it's four areas. They want to understand what we stand for. What's our ethos? What's our story? Are we here for public good? Are we here for ourselves? Or are we here to make money? Or what are we here for? In our case, uh, we've articulated our, what we stand for. They want to know they get excellent reliability. They want to know the bus rocks up on time. It's clean. The tube's there. There's enough space. They want to know those things. They want value for money, which is not just about the ticket price, but it's about the package around that. And it's more than just the number that you pay. They want progress and innovation, and this is an area where we can really have an impact through use of the cloud and through the use of technology and digital services. We can show things moving very quickly. You know, it's hard for us to create a new railway. It takes a number of years. It's very expensive uh, to build more capacity on buses. We've got limited road space. 
but we can do progress and innovation through technology very quickly. And that's something that we seek to do through our platforms. And if we get that stuff right, then that will boil down to trust, which is our most valued commodity. If we've got the trust of our customers, if we've got the trust of policy makers and those who invest in us, then we can continue to make things better for people in London. We can continue to make our services, uh, improve our services and plan for the long term. So let's talk about our digital services then. We have a web property that many of you will be familiar with. It's called tfl.gov.uk. My department, I'm responsible for web, for open data, where we're very big in open data. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Social media and intranets. But today I'll just talk about the web. And this is our web property over the last few years. You can see which way it's going. I'm sure many of your web properties are doing similar things. So we're a, a site of some scale in our country. And we were seeking to do something to uh, move our properties on from the legacy that we've had. So our legacy issues are that we haven't really changed stuff since 2007. Our old web properties were pretty dated. They could do the basics, weren't particularly expiring, required a lot of user effort. They didn't meet customer expectations. Nowadays, people want personalized stuff. They want it localized. They want it on any device. And we weren't meeting those kind of aspirations of our customers. And our user experience actually on mobile devices and tablets was pretty poor. So how did we come about getting these requirements? Well, we spent a lot of time with users, with our customers, talking to them about what they would like. And really, a lot of these themes uh, I've just mentioned came out. No, no kind of earth-shattering revelations here. Funnily enough, these days, people want to do stuff on a mobile. They want to do everything, everywhere, on any device, at any time. That's what they want. So these were the requirements. And our vision was to produce something a bit like this, something that was responsive, something that could enable people to have a rich experience with a personality across all their devices. So how did we approach this from a technology point of view? Well, we were doing an agile project with an agile app uh, user-centered, and we were also approaching the infrastructure in an agile way, which is interesting. So we had the whole thing iterating uh, together. It made life quite interesting over that period of time. Our requirements, functional, non-functional, were to have this personalized and localized approach, to have a, a presentation layer uh, on top of an API-based architecture, uh, responsive design. From a performance point of view, we needed scalability. We get pretty serious spikes. We get bad weather. Sometimes we have industrial action, which causes a lot of people to come to our site. Some services, we could have 30 times spikes. Some other services, they can be a bit higher than that. It needs to be 100% available. People are relying on us. They want to get home uh, to see their kids. They need to get to that job interview. They need to get to work on time. They rely on these services. They need to be able to plan and use them at any time. It needs to be fast, and it needs to be highly secure. And security is absolutely critical for us in what we do uh, in terms of the visibility of the services that we have. It needed to be cost effective, and so on. So when we looked at all these requirements, and we looked at the legacy architecture that we had, it very quickly became clear that we needed to use a cloud-based approach. We needed something that was utterly elastic. So previously, we'd had a fixed capacity with a CDN on top. But with all these much more unique inquiries that we're having from customers, geolocation, personalization, uh, those kind of inquiries, journey plans, we needed the ability to be able to deal with all of them in an elastic way. We needed speed and flexibility. And that's not just about the services themselves. It's about how we could use those and administer those services. Cost was very important to us. We, want, we are uh, desperate to create value and be a value for money organization that delivers for our customers. Resilience and referenceability. And we selected AWS because it was the best match for our stack and because of this usage-based approach for us, that delivers us significant benefits. And also, I suppose, the last thing, it's not an, not an insignificant thing, but it's a rapidly developing platform. It's moving all the time. 
And in terms of our aspirations to be agile and develop things quickly for our customers, we felt they were matched by the platform and by the people we got to know who were working on that platform. Some of the challenges of delivery, I mentioned the product was evolving through an agile program and the platform was evolving at the same time. So you've got wheels within wheels, everything moving. We had an in-house team with a multi-supplier environment, all sort of working together, co-located. We had pretty challenging timescales, moving from an experimental phase into a production phase. And we didn't have a lot of experience on the cloud. So it was something that we were learning. The platform itself is maturing and changing. And uh, as many of you may have, there's some skepticism, sometimes internally, about what, what are you actually doing? You know, the cloud, it'll, it'll never cut it for operational services, I've heard people say. So all of this going on, they are some of the challenges that we faced in delivery. So what were our outcomes? Well, what we delivered, we delivered a, a new API. I could talk about that all day, but it's a single API with a canonical data model for all of our services. I talked about open data. We're a leader in that. The 200 or so smartphone apps that are out there that you probably used some of this morning in order to get here, they're made with our open data by around 6,000 app developers. So we've created a new API to make it much easier and faster for them to use, and we've created that on the cloud. We created this web application uh, that's MVC-based. We have these multiple environments that we can stand up and down, push button, creation, product deployment. Uh, it's a totally scripted build. Uh, it's an auto-scaling environment, and we do a blue-green release approach that's really nice. We can scale up, we can scale down to save cost, we can switch things off at the weekend or overnight. It's a really nice uh, thing to have uh, and obviously our, our caching layer. And a whole bunch of other things as well, obviously on the functional side. But I could go on all day, but I, I won't. So what have our outcomes been from an infrastructure point of view? What have, what's happened? Well, we've had really solid availability and performance. We're very pleased with what the platform is doing for us. Uh, we had some tube strikes back in April, which was just a month or half a month after we launched the site, and we sustained some pretty serious load. Uh, not only all the web load, but also all the API load that we see is pretty significant in terms of what we're doing. The ease of standing up our environments has really been proved. You know, we want to do some development work. We can stand up an environment that's is totally isolated. We can work on that. We can throw it away. We can change it, move it on. Uh, it, it makes a huge difference to us. Auto-scaling and the blue-green deployment, that's working really nicely. And we're going to make some substantial savings. We're already making substantial savings on our operating costs. And now we're looking to extend this. We're doing a project right now to put Journey Planner certainly uh, elements of journey plan into the cloud. And there'll be much, much more as time goes on. From our customer point of view, so that's all the technology stuff. Actually, it's the customer bit that really matters. We're seeing people planning journeys more than ever before on our estate, over 10% increase. Uh, and we had the highest number of visits to the journey planner in April. Mobile usage now has overtaken. Uh, just from March, when we did our launch, we're seeing mobile overtaking desktop. And when you throw in tablet, it, it totally knocks desktop away, about 60% between mobile and tablet. And that's new, and that's on the platform that we've created and because of the platform that we've created. We're seeing customer satisfaction very strong. We're now getting 76% of Londoners using the site, about 20 million visits a month. And we've been fortunate enough to pick up some awards as well. So just some learnings then, just as a wrap up. The benefits of the uh, scripted build and the auto-scaling, they're really significant. It isn't trivial to do it. It's, it requires a concerted effort, discipline, <laughs> uh, a smart approach. There's lots of ways to get it wrong. We've got it wrong in some of those ways, I'm sure. There's maybe some other ways. Uh, we had a lot of help in order to deliver that. Uh, specific cloud experience really makes things faster. If you've got people who've been through some of the learning curve before, that makes stuff quicker. It makes it faster. We established an integrated co-located team with product and the product development and infrastructure, and that really helped us. 
So we didn't divorce the application from the infrastructure, very much had these guys working hand in glove. In fact, all of our suppliers and our in-house team, we just took our badges off and just worked together uh, to create something really great. You do need a mindset that allows for agility. You know, some of this stuff you're going to throw it away. You might, you, you might see something in your stack and just, you know, chuck it away as a disposable element to it. And you need to change perhaps your mindset in some ways about how you run infrastructure. And really lastly, the, this kind of transformation is not necessarily easy. Uh, it requires a bit of a bold approach. But if you're willing to uh, make those kind of bets, then I think we've shown in this project at least that we get a good return for those. So hopefully that's uh, a useful kind of roundup of what we've been doing. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>